Ha. So I've been asked quite a lot of times to look at this, and it's the production of carbon snakes. I think people want to have an, a relatively easy method to make a high surface area of carbon. So I've looked at three methods, and to be honest, they're just fun to do. So I thought I'd give it a go and do those three methods for you, and you could have a look at the carbons that they produce and maybe use those carbons in batteries or something like that. Now, the three methods I've chosen are, one is a relatively safe method, if you like. I mean, it does use a burning fluid, so it's not tremendously safe. The other one's sort of a mildly scary method in that it uses sulfuric acid. And the final one is super scary because it uses a poison, sulfuric acid, and has an explosive reaction. It's very cool, and I'm going to do that one last. And I'm probably going to step away while it actually reacts so you can see the, rea you see the reaction. But the first one we're going to start with is this one. Now, it, it's a really well-known reaction, and it produces a carbon snake. And here we have 50 grams of normal table sugar, and here we have 30 milliliters of sulfuric acid. And if I pour that sulfuric acid into that table sugar, a carbon snake will form. Now, it doesn't happen immediately, okay? It takes a little bit, so I'm going to add it, give it a stir, talk about it a little bit. And that's plenty, it'll start going down. You'll see it change color from the sugar to a, a golden brown, then black. Then it'll start spitting and bubbling, and it'll start rising up there, giving off lots of fumes. The sugar is basically made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. And what the sulfuric acid does is it pulls the hydrogen and oxygen off, recombines it as water, and we get an awful lot of steam coming off of that. And that reaction creates voids in the uh, molten sugar as it gets really, really hot. And you'll notice it's on a ceramic tile and a fire blanket as it gets hot. And you can see it's starting to go brown. It will start to go black in a moment or two. And then that reaction will happen. And it'll produce an awful lot of fumes. And there'll be sulfuric acid in those fumes. So it will make you cough. While that one's going, what we're going to do is set up this next one, which is the, if you like, relatively safe one. Now, in there, what we've got is ordinary table sugar again, but it's mixed in a ratio of four to one with baking soda. In this one, as it burns and gets hot, the sugar melts and makes a caramel, the baking soda breaks down and produces carbon dioxide, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. It's what it does in your um, cooking. But you need a fuel with that, and in there we've got a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, and that's going to be the fuel. Again, it takes a little bit of time to get going. So I've got here a tray of sand, I've put on my ceramic brick, I'm going to pour the fuel in there, I'm going to put the sugar mix in there, and basically set a light to the alcohol, and the alcohol will begin to burn, melt the sugar, break the carbon, uh, hydrogen carbonate down, and we'll see a nice black snake forming. So there's a good quantity of fuel there. You can see that's now beginning to go black. Put our sugar and baking soda mix on there. And then light that. Should have got a spill. Sorry, I'm just making something a taper to light that with. <clears throat> and we'll just leave that to burn and do its job. You can see that's now going black and a little bit will start to bubble. As this one starts to cook, we'll get a carbon snake rising out of that. Now the final one is this one. Now in these, we've got about 50 grams here. We've got about 15, 20 grams there, but here we've only got about four grams of material. It's that yellow powder. And what that yellow powder is, is uh, four nitroaniline. It's a precursor to dyes, so they make a lot of this stuff. But in itself, it is in fact poisonous. Now, this reaction takes a little bit to get going, so what we need to do with it when we want it to get going is heat it. So I put it on a tripod and I put it on a Bunsen burner, and to that nitroaniline, all I'm going to do is add some sulfuric acid, and here's some 96% sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid we added there, incidentally, was also 96%. And we can see here that we're beginning to grow our carbon snake already as that burns. And you can see the carbon snake forming here.
And that's where the sugar is burning, but it's trapped the carbon dioxide and the carbon snake is actually forming. This one, we don't put much sulfuric acid in here, incidentally. So we've got four grams, but we only need two milliliters of sulfuric acid. Give that a little bit of a stir. You can see that one is beginning to form its carbon snake now. There's all the water fumes and the acid fumes coming off. So I'm in a particularly well ventilated area and that one will go hiss and bubble and rise up. And you can see here we're forming our nice carbon snake now from the burning experiment where we're using uh, baking soda mixed in with the sugar and isopropanol alcohol. I'm going to save this one until these two have got going because this is the one where I want to be out of the way of it. So I'm going to wait until these are done a little bit, then I'm going to get out of the way and just leave that to react. Now, as that bubbles, what it'll do is polymerize. It'll go black and it will react suddenly. So you want to keep your eye on that to see that reaction because it is sudden, dramatic and explosive. And it's pretty awesome, to be honest. And here we go. Here's our carbon snake forming from our baking soda, sugar and isopropyl alcohol. So there's our snake forming from the sugar and sulfuric acid mix. This one, obviously, if you're wanting to use that carbon, then it's going to be um, pretty contaminated with sulfuric acid, actually. So even the disposal of that is going to be a bit difficult and um, need care, because like I said, there's a lot of sulfuric acid still left in that. This one, obviously, is just burnt sugar and baking soda, and it's incredibly light, actually. That'll, that'll grow quite long, and it produces this incredibly light carbon here, which is the black ram's horn that you can see forming there. Okay. We're going to do this one now. So let's get the Bunsen burner on. Okay, I'm going to get out of the way now. You keep your eye on that.
that awesome? <laughs> this is a particular favourite of mine, actually, and as I say, you won't have seen that anywhere else, probably. Um, that, this uses, like I say, um, fortronitroaniline, a couple of millilitres of sulfuric acid. <coughs> oh dear. This one's going beautifully. This is your safe method. And here is the carbon snake that we made with sulfuric acid. All of these are pretty good ways of making carbon. But some of these, really, if you don't have experience, you shouldn't actually be doing. This is probably the safest, because it just uses nice household ingredients. There goes my fire alarm. Like I said, it does create a lot of feelings. Anyway, I hope that was of interest. And thank you very much for watching.